Green hydrogen seems to be on the rage right now, pulling an estimated average global investment of 800 billion per year up to 2050. Many industries are getting ready to flourish at a shadow and the range extender will be one of them. Let me show you why. <laughs> Some of you may know that at Inengine we're developing a hydrogen range extender with active pre-chamber technology. On the other hand, we already saw how range extenders shouldn't be seen as hybrid vehicles but rather as EVs with a top-up generator. A purely electric vehicle which when push comes to shove has a backup power source making it safer even with smaller batteries which in turn translates into more EVs on our roads. Great, but the fact remains, how can we achieve true net zero emissions if every once in a while, whether once a week, a month or even once a year, our battery is being charged using fossil fuels? And the answer is green hydrogen. But what does in engine and more specifically our E-REX technology have to do with hydrogen implementation? Right now we're in a vicious circle where hydrogen prices are high and there are few H2 refueling stations because few customers use them. But people won't buy hydrogen cars while refueling costs remain high and hydrogen stations are scarce. But if people don't buy them cars, prices won't come down and stations will remain unaffordable. How can we get out of this? The solution is the E-REX. A real range extender vehicle is meant to run 90% of the time as a pure EV, in other words, drawing power exclusively from the battery. And even when it uses fuel, most of the times it won't be for long, meaning the average daily commuter would get weeks or even months out of a single tank. This minimizes at the same time both the cost issue and the station grid scarcity issue. In fact, if you had to refuel only once every two or three months, in all likelihood you won't mind it so much if you have to drive a bit longer to get to the pump and probably you won't be so bothered if the cost is slightly higher. This in turn would put more willing hydrogen customers on the roads raising demand and lowering costs, which in turn would make H2 stations more profitable and hydrogen itself more affordable to more people in more diverse applications, meaning more customers, more demand and lower costs, which in turn, I think we get it. And in engine E-REX goes farther than that, since its specific power makes it perfect for hydrogen applications, where specific power or power density is a lot lower. So much so that we are already working with leading companies like Goodmar, Eder Technologies, the CMT of University of Valencia, as well as the Aeronautical Technology Center of País Vasco, in order to develop the next generation of green hydrogen aeronautical engines. Some of the reasons why an engine technology was chosen for this project are the fact that our engines are very light and small, while very powerful. You see, alternative fuels, whether green hydrogen or any other e-fuel, tend to be much less power dense. Therefore, an engine's power-to-weight ratio becomes critical. And it's not just power, there's also the fact that modern opposed piston engines like the Achates are proving that opposed piston technology works better than conventional engines for hydrogen applications. And on top of being tiny, the E-REX happens to have a post-piston configuration. And I could go on and on with many more in-engine hydrogen synergies, such as having variable compression ratio on demand, or having a much more adiabatic combustion, but we will leave all those for another video. So all this to say that in-engine E-REX is not just the perfect engine for range extender applications, but also the engine that will spearhead hydrogen power mobility, leading the charge towards true net zero transportation.